I got up early and I got dressed so I could get off but now I can't. Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising As Crew. My name is Lucy and today is part two to 10 things I hate about cruise ships. So we're doing another 10 because you liked it so much the first time. But as I said in the first video, I do actually love cruise ships, but like every single job on this planet, there are gonna be parts that you love about a job and parts that you dislike about a job. So without further ado, let's go through 10 more things that I hate about working on cruise ships. So number one is gonna be sharing a cabin. But this is just sharing a cabin if you don't click with your roommate. Now I have done videos previously on how to deal with awkward roommates and basically how to make it through, but it definitely is something that is very difficult to deal with if you are with someone who you don't like or you don't gel with or you are not compatible with. You might get on with them great when you're at work, but you are not compatible when living together. And the problem is it's very difficult to move. It's possible. So let's say you've had the awkward conversation with that person about the fact that you don't get on and you want to change cabins. Well, there has got to be someone else in your department of the same sex that is also willing to trade with you because otherwise there's nowhere for you to go. Cruise ship crew cabins are usually full. There isn't really like a spare room that they keep free just in case someone doesn't like their roommate. You will have to discuss it with the whole team and see if someone is willing to switch roommates with you which normally they're not. So really the only time that you are able to switch cabins is when someone is finishing their contract and you can ask your manager if you are able to take their spot and the new person that's going to replace the person that's leaving can have your cabin that you are currently in. So if you end up sharing a cabin with someone that you don't gel with, it is very difficult and you will learn a lot from it. I mean, some of the biggest lessons I've ever learned have been through those experiences. So you know, there's always a silver lining. Number two is doing laundry. Now, I'm sure that no one particularly enjoys doing laundry anywhere, but doing laundry on a cruise ship as a crew member is particularly rubbish because you have to do it in your time off, which you don't get much of anyway. So the last thing you wanna do is spend your precious time off doing laundry. But it has to be done. No one wants to smell. Hopefully, if you picked a good day and a quiet time, there is a machine free. But nine times out of ten, there isn't, and you have to sit there and wait for a washing machine to become available. And you're probably not the only person waiting. Then you have to wait for like 40 minutes while your clothes get washed. You have to come back and try and find a dryer that's free. And then you have to wait for it to be dried. And because you have to keep checking on your clothes that are drying, this means that you can't really do anything else or get stuck into anything else while your clothes are in the washer. So it's basically two to three hours of your life that like they're the, it's the most mundane thing ever but unfortunately it, it has to be done. Number three is how unpredictable cruise ships can be. From when you start work on a cruise ship, you're waiting to get your ship, you could be waiting a week, you could be waiting six months. Then when you get on board, you could be transferred. It doesn't happen very often, but you do have that possibility of being transferred to another ship because at the end of the day, you are there to fulfill the company needs. If the company needs you or your particular skill set on another cruise ship, they don't care that you might have a boyfriend on the ship, you've made loads of friends on the ship, they will transfer you. It's also unpredictable in terms of when you're going to be sent home. I mean, COVID came and I was sent home along with thousands of other crew members. That was very unpredictable. I mean, I know COVID was unpredictable anyway, but the cruise industry being affected as much as it was, was very unpredictable. And then when you go home for your vacation, once again, you could be waiting two months for your next ship or six months for your next ship. The longer you are in the industry, your opinion matters more because obviously these companies value loyalty. If you're someone who has been in the company for a while, they are gonna take your opinion into consideration. However, when you first start with these cruise companies, you're gonna go where they need you to go. You're gonna go home when they need you to go home go on whatever ship they need you to go on. So for the first few contracts, you are proving yourself to the company that you are gonna be a loyal employee. But yeah, the unpredictability of it can be 
really hard to navigate sometimes and you are definitely kept on your toes. Now leading on from the unpredictability of cruise ships, this can sometimes end up in there being a very high turnover of crew on one ship. So for example, when I was on Rhapsody of the Seas and we were going over to South America, the rule was that 90% of the crew had to be able to speak Spanish. Up until that point, the crew had been in Europe. So there was a lot of English speaking crew on board. So there was a huge, huge crew turnover. But the thing for me that I hated about this isn't necessarily the crew changing because that can be a good thing. Okay, the goodbyes are sad, but when you get new people on board it, you know, it, it's nice, it's fresh, it keeps things interesting. However, if you end up with a manager that is constantly changing, that is exhausting. So I've done a video on it. I had seven managers in one contract. In one nine month contract, I had seven managers. That's almost a new manager every month. And it was knackering because although I'm doing the same job, every manager wants things done slightly differently every month. So you just get used to doing things one way because that manager likes it that way and then they're like, oh, I'm being transferred or my contract's ending or whatever. You have a new manager and they're like, well, why are you doing it like that? <laughs> because that's how the old manager liked it. She's like, well, I like it like this. I'm like, okay. So if you end up on a ship where there's a lot of changes and the hierarchy of the ship are changing around a lot, yeah, it's exhausting because you have to keep adapting to how they want things done. Working on ships can be quite isolating because you are away from home and as I said in the last 10 things I hate video, being on a cruise ship is like being in a bubble and everything outside of that cruise ship kind of falls away. But this can lead to people being quite lonely, especially if they don't make real connections when they're on board. You know, it's really important that you build relationships and make friends on board and you're not just work, sleep, work, sleep, work, sleep because it can lead to you feeling very lonely, which leads to you feeling very depressed. You know, you might be on a cruise ship that's in a completely different time zone to where you are from. When I was in Australia, and um, all my family are in the UK, when I'm getting up, they're going to bed, and it was so hard to find a right time to communicate because if they were like, well, I'm free now, I'm like, well, I'm at work, I can't call you. So that was really, really difficult. But to combat that, you do have to put all your energy into building new relationships when you are on board. You know, having people that you can rely on when you are having a bad day, when you need someone to talk to, having people that you can trust on board is really, really important. And then you find these people that you can trust and you build amazing friendships with but then you go home for your vacation and you have to start all over again every single six months. If you think about starting university or moving to a different city it's terrifying because you have to start again. I have to do that every single six months. Maybe there's like one or two people that I know. So when I went on Virgin Voyages, there was a guy called Akhtar who was on Oceana with me, so I knew him. We weren't really close on Oceana just because we had completely different schedules, but that was the only familiar face that I had. And every single cruise ship that I have gone on, you have to start all over again and it's terrifying. But it is one of those love-hate things, you know. I love the fact that you can continuously reinvent yourself. You're always growing as a person because you're always meeting new people and learning new things, but it is exhausting. And what happens is it leads you to feel quite disconnected to people at home. Because if you think, like all my friends who are staying in one place, they are building a life, you know, they're making friends, they're making deeper connections, they're getting houses and they're really rooting themselves in one place. I do that, I make great friends and all of those things, but then they're all from the other side of the world. So after six months, it's like, see ya. And then I have to start all over again. And I must say, going back to Virgin, I'm really, <laughs> one of the things that I'm really grateful for is that I know, I've already been on board and I know quite a lot of the people that are gonna be there and I know that I like some of the people on there and I'm already friends with them so I'm not gonna have to start completely from scratch this time and I gotta be honest with you, I'm quite relieved. Wi-Fi has to be in this list, I have mentioned it before and whether you are a passenger or a crew member, you know that the Wi-Fi on board cruise ships is awful. and okay, I should be grateful that we even have Wi-Fi on board, but it is dodgy. You try and watch a YouTube video and it's buffering for like 10 minutes, you're like, just forget it. 
you try and send a WhatsApp message or a voice message to your mom, you're like, just forget it. You try and have a voice call, forget it. That's really difficult if you are just using cruise ship Wi-Fi because obviously, especially nowadays, we are used to great Wi-Fi pretty much wherever you go you can get some really good Wi-Fi. So to completely rely on dodgy ass satellite Wi-Fi on a cruise ship for six to nine months, it's challenging. Something that does great on you is lack of privacy. You have a roommate, you go out with the people you work with, everyone knows everything, you know, everyone's really, really nosy and just in each other's lives. So it's very difficult to be private with your emotions, private with things that are going on in your life, but also private with like getting dressed because you have a roommate or going to sleep because you are constantly surrounded by people at work if you're out in port or you're in the cabin with them there's always people around and because people care about you they want to know what's going on in your life if it's privacy with your roommate hopefully you have a relationship where you can just say do you mind if i have the cabin for an hour on my own and hopefully they'll be like absolutely fine and then when they want the cabin for an hour on their own you'll oblige and go to the mess or go and have a coffee on deck or something but this is something that i know a lot of crew members struggle with because it, it's hard ipm so ipm stands for in port manning and what it is is when the cruise ship is in port there needs to be a certain amount of crew members on board at all times so if an emergency broke out there is enough people to deal with it if every crew member got off when we were docked in st thomas and then there was a fire well, who's going to fight it? Because all the crew are off sunbathing. So there always has to be a certain amount of people on board and a certain amount of emergency positions covered. So even if I'm not working and it's my day off, if I'm on IPM that day, I have to stay on board. And it can be really annoying if you are in an amazing port and you have a good amount of time off, but you can't get off because you have to be on board if anything happens which 99.9 .9 times out of 100 it doesn't i mean it's part of the job but it is really really irritating especially if you had planned something for that day or you were really looking forward to that particular port and then you're told that you've got ipm there'll normally be a schedule so you will know that you know okay this day in venice i'm going to be on ipm but sometimes it does just kind of creep up on you and you'll go to the gangway with your friends to get off. You'll scan your car and they'll be like, actually, you can't get off because you're IPM. And you're like, I got up early and I got dressed so I could get off, but now I can't. Deliveries. So obviously cruise ships have lots of stuff on board. You know, the shops are full of stock. The bar has lots of alcohol and that all has to be bought on board quite regularly. So normally every embarkation day, depending on the cruise ship and where it is in the world, the cruise ship will have a delivery. So I work in the shops, the shops will have a delivery of stock, the spa will have a delivery of skincare products, the bars will have a delivery of alcohol. So what happens on delivery days, the crew members who are doing that delivery have to get up extremely early and be there for when the pallets get on board and then we have to unpack everything, put it in the right place. If it has a price ticket on it, we have to put the price ticket on it and it's just a really long monotonous day it's a lot of heavy lifting it's a lot of checking that the stock that's arrived corresponds with the list and it is just part of the job so that concludes my second 10 things I hate about working on cruise ships. But just to reiterate, I have done a 10 things I love about working on cruise ships. And overall, I do love working on cruise ships. But I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please let me know in the comments or you can DM me over on Instagram at cruisingascrew. Smash that like button and I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye.